All right, we're back. Sadly, sadly, we're back. Seymour and me, Seymour Kazimersky and me, we're doing uh, a series called Bigotry in America, and we're talking about anti-Semitism in the U.S. after Gaza, or during Gaza, I should say. Welcome to the show, Seymour. Thank you, Jay. Uh, you know, on the last show, we talked about what actually happened in the Gaza. But today, let's focus a little bit on anti-Semitism, because I think people need to understand what the terminology means, how it got all started, and what is it, you know, how does it affect everyday people? And to do that, I'd like to give you my version of anti-Semitism. When I was a, a young boy living in a small town called Senegal des Monts, which is a French uh, town in the province of Quebec, right outside of a vibrant metropolitan city, Montreal, there were signs on hotels. And the signs were in English and in French, and they said, no dogs and no Jews allowed. And I understood that. I under, my parents explained that to me. They were Holocaust survivors. And they said there was anti-Semitism still, even after the World War, uh, World War II, after six million Jews were, were killed by Hitler, there was still vibrant anti-Semitism in this little French town. When I would go to school, I went to a, a, a a Protestant school, actually. There was no Jewish school there at the time. And I go to this Protestant school, and the principal, his name was Jacobson, I'm not afraid to say it, this son of a bitch was anti-Semitic. Every time he would see me, he would pick on me. He would call me into his office for whatever reason, and he would take that ruler and wrap my knuckles on it. So I experienced anti-Semitism, and I want the audience to know, I want people to know, it's a very, very personal issue. Has it, did it start with Seymour Kazimersky or World War II? No. Anti-Semitism has been around for hundreds of years. If people watch anything or, or, or realize what happened in the history of the world, and they go back to the pharaohs, they go back to uh, uh, modern times in the 1400s, 1500s, 1800s, I could, I could go on for an hour and a half and giving you, a, giving you examples of anti-Semitism. But it's a world problem that has been here forever. Well, how, That's how, the true how definition. How did it start, Seymour? It's, a, it's an odd, you know, it's an odd phenomenon. Just this one group of stiff-necked people, and they get picked on for hundreds, even thousands of years. Why? It's it, it's 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 called a common cause, Jay. When you look at somebody who has something that you don't have, and you want it, and you can't get it, they are a bad guy. And that has really happened to Jews over the centuries. Look at what's going on today between Israel and the Arabs. Look what's going on in Hitler times. Why did he use the Jews as a scapegoat? Ask yourself that. Because they had more than a lot of the other, than a lot of the other German citizens. And because they had more, he was able to say, the reason that you are the way you are today is because of the Jews. And of course, he used every name in the book to describe them. They were maggots. They were they they stole things. They 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 used their blood to make uh, matzah. You know things like that. It was a horrible, horrible time. Jews traditionally have been the natural scapegoat. Do you think England was easy? Do you think Canada was great? Don't you remember that they refused to allow Jews to come in? Why? Poland, Hungary. It's a world problem, Jay. It's not a problem just for Gaza and Israel. It's a world problem. And it's something that you and I and everybody else has to stand up and say, what are we going to do about it? Now, I, I, have, I have a personal theory that it, it started. I don't think it existed per se before, you know, the era of Christ. Um, and somehow, you know, the Catholic Church, as it spread, as it spread its dogma, uh, you know, its culture, the Jews were baked into that. They were the people that killed Christ. That's not true, Jay. That's not true. Right. The Jews I, did I, not I, kill Christ. I, but anyway, okay, it's not here. true, but there's a lot of untruths around these days. Right. And, um, you, know, uh, you know, the whole story of Judas and, um, right. you know, that, that carried on and it baked in and as uh, Catholicism, Christianity flowed through Europe, it was inherent in that. So it, it may not have created anti-Semitism right away, but it was a it was a kind of a an arbor plate, you know. It was a, it was an environment in which anti-Semitism could grow and find legs. 
And it did, you know, by 1492, they were doing the um, Inquisition and so forth. And it gives you an idea about how this thing had grown all around Europe. But here's the thing, you know, we've had times of tremendous anti-Semitism, unbelievable anti-Semitism to wit the Holocaust. That was the worst, you know, to date. There, were, there had been a lot of pogroms and, you know, and, 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 and violent anti-Semitic um, episodes up to that point, but it, it, was, it was all small stuff compared to the Holocaust. Since the Holocaust, uh, anti-Semitism has, 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 has decreased. And probably because people in general say, my God, there were, you know, six million people were killed. We can't continue to do that. Um, and it declined in the United States and the United States became, you know, a relatively peaceful place. And if there was anti-Semitism, it was the kind of anti-Semitism that you experience at the country club, um, but not, not on the streets, not with violence, not with murder and destruction and arson and what have you. But during the Trump administration, Seymour, it all came back, roaring back. And it's not the only racist thing that has come back um, during the Trump administration. You know, you can think of uh, African-American racism, you can think of Asian racism, you can think of LBGTQ racism, um, all that. It's all, all this kind of divisiveness. Vladimir Putin would be happy to see all the divisiveness in our country. He's probably happy to see anti-Semitism. But if you look at the newspaper in the last week or so, just as uh, the uh, Gaza you know, uh, event was winding down, um, you, know, you see, you see anti-Semitism in pretty much all major American cities. Sometimes it's uh, breaking windows and sometimes it's uh, yelling out of cars and sometimes it's beating people up on the street. I don't think there's been any murders yet, but it wouldn't surprise me. And it seems to be getting worse in terms of the personal security of the Jewish person and institution. Can you wear a yarmulke on your head these days? Can you put a, you know, a, a, a mezuzah on your doorpost without thinking, gee whiz, is this going to get me in trouble? Um, can you go to shul on Saturday? Is this going to get me in trouble? Um, I'm, I'm thinking that it's never been like this in my lifetime. And I grew up in New York. I, I grew up in the melting pot, whatever. Lots of different, you know, racial, cultural, religious groups, uh, all living together, and there was a certain amount of friction between them, but never like this, never like this. And now we have a, a loss, a lack, a decline of security. Um, and I don't think that's going to stop, Seymour. I don't think, you know, they said now they have a coalition government in in uh, Israel, and uh, ho hopefully, um, you know, the uh, without uh, Netanyahu in charge, things will, you know, be more civil. But, but bottom line is, I don't think that stops this, this process. This is a phenomenon, as you say, that has gone on for hundreds, even thousands of years. Uh, it's not going to stop. And it's so, be a, a great concern right now that it has been flowering out this way. What do we do about it, Jay? That's a big what? question. We should spend some time on that. Exactly. What, what do we do about it? People have to understand education is still the key to, to, to making sure that people understand what's going on. I personally am a Holocaust lecturer, and I go and I talk to schools throughout the state of Hawaii. My sister is doing something in, in Canada with uh, not just anti-Semitism, but genocide in general. If people are willing to put the effort out to teach, to educate, to help people understand what anti-Semitism is, then they'll understand that it's wrong. And it's not the right way to live a life. Because, you know, Simo, you have been doing that for as long as I know you. I yeah, have seen you and I have taped you. You're talking about the Holocaust. Very, very powerful discussions, very powerful um, you know, uh, footage and photographs that you show and powerful stories that you tell. But, you know, I, and there's a certain amount of benefit to the kids who listen. But I could wipe that out in 10 minutes with a badly framed news story on cable TV. Yep. And that happens. Yep. Social media, cable TV, Jay, that is where they sell news with negativity. Negativity is the key to how they want to get their rating. So if they can sell blood, they will get better news. 
it's 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 a horrible situation. Social media, uh, CNN, Foxes, all these guys have one thing in common: we need to raise our rating. How do we raise our rating? And one point right now is anti-Semitism is hot, so they're showing a lot of it. Uh, BLM uh, is supporting the Palestinians today. Tell they're against what Israel. That is. Pardon me. Uh, 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 tell everybody what uh, B, uh, oh, BLM. Black Lives Matter you're talking about. Right. But you're talking about BDS. Yeah, no, no. Well, you know, to me, Jay, the ability of uh, groups to use the Palestinian issue against is Israel is also a, a form of anti Semitism because they don't want to understand the totality of the situation in Israel. They don't want to understand that 4,000 rockets were sent over Israel, 4,000 rockets to kill indiscriminately. Does that ring a bell? That word indiscriminate is like Hitler, indiscriminately. They just wanted to kill as many Jews as they could. What does Israel do to retaliate? So they send uh, their rockets over Gaza, but what do they do? They make sure that they tell them before they send the rockets, get out of your, your house, get out of your domicile, get out of your business, because we know that you're housing Hamas rockets there or Hamas fighters there. So, so the, 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 the event in the news is, look what Israel did. They killed hundreds of Palestinians. Yes, they did. They could have killed thousands. They could have wiped out all of the Palestinians. But no, morally, Israel is much more responsible than Hamas. Hamas has no morality whatsoever. And that in itself gives us the essence of anti-Semitism. If you don't want to allow people to live next to you as, as, a, as a human being, you are, and I'm talking Jews against non-Jews, you are anti-Semitic. And it, it, it's, it's a horrible situation that we as Jews and people in general have to stand up for. Jay, I have as many non-Jewish friends who believe in what I'm saying right now as I do Jewish friends. I have teachers in schools that beg me to come and do Zoom lectures to their students because they understand how important it is to teach that the Holocaust was the biggest anti-Semitic event in history. And why is that important? Well, you you're only reaching a certain number of people when you when you when you give your lectures, when you talk to your friends, and and right. uh, and, and, and that's not enough to stop this. Uh, agreed. Because you know, right now, anti-Semitism has attached itself to both the left and the right. You know, going back to Charlottesville, uh, Trump said yeah. some might. Um, you know, they're, some of their some of the anti semites. They're nice people too. Um, yeah. You know, and the, and the, the whole thing about white supremacy and the extreme right and attacking the capital with weapons and this and that. And then at the same time, you have a, a and so and Congress. Uh, you know, the GOP apparently likes Israel because Trump likes Israel, I suppose, um, or did like it. Um, the GOP is is not helping. Um, because they're conflicted about this white supremacy thing. And on the other side, you have the, uh, you know, the liberals, the activists, the cause-driven community that attach also to anti-Semitism. You're talking so if, about the AOC, Jay. You're talking I am, about, I am talking about uh, You're AOC. talking about a lot of Democrats who I respect and I love. As, as, as an independent, I like both sides. There are things I don't like about both sides. I don't like a lot of things about what Israel does too, just for clarification purposes. But when you get people in Congress like the AOC who are truly diehard anti-Semitic, my God, and they, they start convincing their constituents about what's going on in the world, according to them, we're in trouble, Jay. It's not How about it's a shout good. out for Bernie Sanders? No. who's Jewish in Congress, yeah. a senator no less, um, introducing legislation to cut off funding to Israel. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I do not understand that. And his family is from Europe, just like yours and mine. Yeah. Uh, so really extraordinary that he would be doing is taking affirmative action um, to injure, to damage, to uh, undercut the relationship um, with Israel, which is the only democratic country in the Middle East. Sorry. The only one. That's that's how it was set up, Jerry. It was set up by the world, by the United Nations, to be a home for people who did not have a home. 
and Jewish people were able to go there and set it up. But you know, uh, today there's a coalition of Arabs that are part of the new political structure in Israel. Today, this just happened today. I know the coalition includes Arabs. That is correct. So it's turning, and that's the it's way it turning more be. democratic. And, and out of 9 million people, some 3 million are um, Israeli Arabs who participate correct. in the economy, who are doctors and lawyers and entrepreneurs. But we don't hear about them. Well, we, you won't hear about it because it's against this, this negative issue that is out there about anti-Semitism and anti-Israel. Don't forget, anti-Semitism and anti-Israel are really two two different issues that we have to discuss. Anti-Israel, if people don't like it because they feel that what they're doing to the Palestinians is terrible. If they don't understand the whole story, I can't help them. But anti-Semitism is something that everybody should understand because it's been around for hundreds, of, as you say, thousands of you know, years. I think they're inextricably intertwined, Seymour. Okay. If you're anti-Israel, you're really saying you don't like the Jewish people. Uh, and, and I feel that one and the other, they're really all the same. It, it may not be in the same degree, um, right. but it's all, it's all just a, an expression of anti-Semitism. So back Jay. to the question, what can we do? What right. can we do to deal with this? Uh, it's not only a perception of what's going on with the raw meat and the news in Israel. That's going to happen again and again. Problem is, it ratchets up the hate. And we have plenty of hate. We have hate and violence now. Uh, in America, in America, this is unbelievable. My parents told me this, that I was lucky to be born in this country because this is the best country in the world. And now I'm wondering, you know, there was a, a little piece in the New York Times story about one family with all the risk in Israel, they're planning to move to Israel. At least in Israel, you don't have anti-Semitism the way, the way you're having it now in the United States. So I agree with you. What, you know, we cannot do Meyer Kahani and go, and go violent on the street with baseball bats. That's not a good idea. We have to speak on it. We have to get you into the it, media Jay. on it. We have to yep. straighten, straighten everybody out as to the facts. Um, and and uh, you know you do that, but you're you're one of you know you're a small fraction. Uh, I know. And think, I and think tech does that be simply because it's it's the truth, and we we like truth. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of people in this country don't like truth, and they see they enjoy accepting the big lie. Uh, in my in my impression of it, they like accepting the big lie because it makes them feel good. It makes them feel they're part of a, a power group. It makes mm -hmm. them feel they're taking a message and living with this message that gives them some kind of gratification, but they know in their hearts it's a lie. That's why I also think that people who are anti-Semitic know that it's wrong. They know it's a lie. Jay, and we have to get back. To do it. Yes, you're right. But we have to get back to what do we do, right? What do we do? If we continue to speak, if we continue to educate, if we continue to have people come out and say, that is not true. Anti-Semitism is a, is a, it's, it's a horrible thing that we as people have to change. We as citizens of the world have to do it. Not just me and you, Jay, but our Congress, our Senate, world leaders. It's not easy, Jay, because anti-Semitism has been around for so long. Every time, and you know, I travel to Germany quite a bit for my business. When I go to Germany and my wife, She's amazed. Sue always says, do you feel it today? And that's that feeling that I get, you know, on the back of my neck when I'm riding in a, in a taxi in, 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 uh, in um, Munich or in um, uh, Berlin. And I still get the feeling it's there. And what do we find out? Now the neo-Nazis in Germany are stronger and stronger than ever. There's a neo-Nazi party in Germany. What do you think their platform is, Jay? Get rid of the Jews anti-Semitism, an actual platform, an actual, an actual party that is there to make sure that Jews are blamed for everything that's wrong in, in their country. Not good. We need to stand up, but it's not going to be easy. It's going to be so difficult because you and I are just, as you said before, we do our part, but it's, it's, it, 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 it's not enough. And I don't know if we'll get leaders in the world who are going to want to do it? It's going to be tough. Very well, tough. Well, let's just uh, look at options. I always feel that you have to look at options. They may not all be the best option, but at least to look at what the possibilities are, and maybe, and maybe you know, jump off that somehow. 
So one is to, um, to write on the internet, to write on in Twitter and Facebook, to write a blog, um, to have a website, and to just keep working on it. Um, the, the second thing is uh, to go into the more popular media, like, like streaming, for example, with ThinkTech, or uh, broadcasting on, you know, on network media or cable media, and, and do shows, um, whether it be fiction or nonfiction, just raise the issue. Um, and I guess the third is, um, it's not necessarily the same, you know, priority, but um, the, the, the college campuses, ah. you know, that's, that's what Hitler did. He went in and formed the Hitler Youth, and these kids were in their preteens and teens, and they loved what he offered them. And by the time they got to be fighting age, they were completely Hitlerized and anti-Semitic. Of course. Um, and, and but, so, but Jay, that, that's still happening, Jay. Uh, I gave a lecture at UH, University of Hawaii, right here. And I gave it to the, the political science class. And there was a large auditorium, three, 400 uh, kids there. And uh, in the back of the class, there was two or three guys who were pretty rowdy. And at the end of it, I always have a Q&A. And these two guys, I said, does anybody have any questions that they'd like to bring up? And uh, a few people had a lot of interesting questions about because I tell the story of my mother in the Holocaust, as you know, and they wanted to know about our relationship with Germans. Now, do we still hate Germans? All this kind of stuff. And then this one guy in the back says, this thing never happened. This thing is just a propaganda thing that Israel has put together that the world is using to show that, you know, Jews were, uh, uh, Jews were killed. And I was just about to answer. I was just about to open my mouth because I've heard this before. And all of a sudden, two girls in the front row, they were maybe 20, 21 years old, they stood up, Jay, and this is the key. They stood up and argued with those guys. I didn't have to argue. They stood up and they said, you don't know what you're talking about. This happened. This is all factual, and so on and so forth. And you see, that's the key. The message mustn't come just from you and me and people like us, because we have and an eight uh, need to be able to try to fix the problem that's there. It's got to be from everybody. It's got to be people standing up and saying, you know what? We have to help to make sure that anti-Semitism, A, doesn't grow, and maybe even gets back down to a simmering boiling pot. Another, another option to consider, uh, I'm you know, uh, incentivized by uh, what you were saying. Um, is uh, is running for office and yeah. becoming a voice in some legislative organization um, and being a watchdog, you know, that goes from the neighborhood board to Congress all the way. Yeah. So if, I, you know, yeah, I don't know, maybe these days you could even run on an anti-hate platform and say, mm -hmm. I'm going to oppose hate, any form of hate. I'm, I'm on it and, um, and I'm going to do what I can. So when AOC gets up in Congress and makes an anti-Semitic remark, there should be five people that stand up and say, you don't know what you're talking about. And just yeah, like those girls. Yes, just Jay, like that's those exactly girls. right. Yeah, exactly right, Jay. And the key them. to it all, I, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, you, got, you know, you have to say it in a way so that it's two hands clapping. Uh, yeah. and, the, and you're more persuasive. You have your playbook worked out. You know, I can tell you that in the BDS, I was talking to this boycott, divest and sanction. Sure which is yep. all about representing the Palestinians. And I believe it's funded by Hamas or Hezbollah or both or, or Iran. And it's been going on a long time. It, um, and it's, it's, a, it's very sophisticated. It's in most American college campuses. And it has taught a lot of American college kids they should boycott, divest, and sanction from Israel. Long time. Exactly. A lot yep. of people believe that stuff. And there's no countervailing force. There should be a countervailing you know, uh, rhetoric, if you will, because what, what, what happens is it gets to be more, more brazen and more mm, propaganda-like and filled with lies, like about the Holocaust, and nobody says boo about it. Um, you know, it's like Absolutely that, correct. Like this video in the street of this, this guy getting beat up. Everybody ran the other way. Nobody went into the fray. Nobody pulled them apart. Nobody yelled at the people who were doing the beating. Uh, and I find that really unacceptable. If you see somebody get, at least you could do is shout at them or right. call the police, or in this case, take a video. 
but there's a lot of things you can do. Running away, hiding, turning your back on it, ignoring it is really not acceptable. That's the way it grows. Jay, you were just hit on the most important part of how to fight anti-Semitism. And that is you have to become vocal. You have to be willing to stand up. You have to be willing to do whatever is necessary to help the people who are, who are doing these things, who are doing anti-Semitic rant, help them understand, teach them. They need to understand that what they're doing is wrong. If you can make them understand the difference between right and wrong, then hopefully some of them will be the pebble in the, in the ocean that spreads. Because without that, Jay, we are going to continue with this. We will continue having a boiling pot, a simmering pot of anti-Semitism for a long, long time. It's just, it's just the way life is today. So our job is to try to curb it, to stop it, to do it. Uh, you know, you and I will not be successful in it because we, we don't have a lot of time, you know, to be able to do something. But hope, hopefully somebody will. Hopefully people around the world in different countries will say, enough is enough. Now we've got to educate. We've got to make it real. Yeah. Well, you know, you have to understand what motivates people. And I heard a very good piece. It was an academic uh, um, Zoom meeting a few days ago, which really impressed me. There was a, a Holocaust survivor there. There was the chief historian of the Holocaust Museum there, and there was an academician. And the, the three of them talked about, uh, you know, what, what led to extremism um, in Germany, in Germany, um, and what lessons we could learn in the United States, because th this, it runs a parallel these days. Yeah, you, you, you keep saying that it's, it's going to be with us a long time. I'm, I'm more concerned than that. I think it's going to get worse. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it is getting worse. So one of the things they talked about, Seymour, I'd like to bounce this off you. Um, is, you know, how, how did it work in Germany when these kids were in Hitler Youth? Well, there were three ends, three ends. The first end was need. You know, people in Germany were needy in the sense that their, mm -hmm. their economics had gone south after World War I, uh, and they felt, um, you know, that they were, not, they were not realizing what they should be realizing. Their, their lives were not promising in those days. That's the first end, need. The second end uh, is narrative that you have to offer the people who are needy a narrative to where they can get what they want. This is so reminiscent of what's happening in this country, a narrative to say, you know, we're gonna replace all the blacks, we're gonna replace all the Asians, we're gonna replace all the Jews, we're gonna make you at the top, we're gonna to do supremacy for you. And um, in that way, that will give you a narrative that you love. So that'll satisfy your need, at least theoretically. Okay, and that's the example of the narrative, the end. And the mm -hmm. third end is networking, and networking is happening now. It's happening with, um, you know, with uh, the, the, the social media. It's happening with Trump and Twitter, or was Twitter. It's happening with the ability of people like-minded, um, you know, who um, can get together and form up and plan. They plan attacks on Washington, um, plan, you know, conspiratorial actions, um, and that meets the third end. So what we have now is a, a, an environment, a landscape that allows for the expansion of anti-Black, anti-Asian, and anti-Semitic hate more than ever before in our lifetimes in this country, in this country. It's going south. And that means that what we're talking about today, Seymour, it's more emergent than it ever was in this country. It's more important that we look at these options carefully and that we act on them. You're 100% right, Shay. One of the issues that we have to have, and you touched on it several times now, is uh, the, the education process of how people get to be the way they are. How does somebody become anti-Semitic? Your parents, per perhaps, are anti-Semitic, and they teach you to hate Jews. I mean, I couldn't believe growing up as a, as a kid in Senegal how many people hated Jews. I would go to school, and uh, one day at the end of the school day, we were playing some sports and this, this guy uh, comes up to me, grabs me by the neck and he said, Modi Jouet. And I don't want to tell you what Modi means because you couldn't air it, but it's a, a, an expletive. And he said, Jew. And then he took me, he took my school bag, he hit me, he tried to beat me up and all that stuff. And who came to my rescue? My brother. 
and he took care of this guy. And at that point in time, I thought it was over. I got home, Jay, and uh, my father gets a call from the police chief. And the police chief says that your son beat up somebody at the school. And we had to explain our position as to why it happened. Jay, my brother could have gone to jail for what he had done to try to make things right. To do the right thing is such an important part of our lives. And we as individuals, when you said before, you can't run away from something like this. Maybe you can't intervene, but you can shout, you can do things, you can you could try to make a better life for people, whether it's anti-Semitism, anti-Black, whatever, whatever the anti is, you have to get involved. And I'm asking the viewers if they want to get involved, whether it's their Rotary Clubs, whether it's teachers, uh, no matter what, by getting involved, we can solve a lot of what's happening in the world today. And that includes the schools. When you look at the schools around the country and you see the presence of BDS without any countervailing organization to argue with them to equal the playing field, um, it's of great concern. And uh, you know this kind of thing happens at UH, I'm telling you now. It happens mm -hmm. at UH and there is no countervailing organization uh, that can speak to it, that can level the playing field, um, that, that can give countervailing arguments very great concern. And it means that the people who have entree to UH, uh, including students, faculty, and outsiders who may have some entree, they should be looking for the problem and they should be dealing with it and they should be arguing against it. Uh, the campuses are such a vulnerable place for young minds um, you know, who can be turned the wrong way. This has happened for years and years, but it's worse now. So we have to look for places where this is happening, is what I'm telling you, Seymour. Much more than to, ever. Much more yes, than Jay. ever. Yes, Jay. Much more than ever. If you look at the college campuses and you look at schools and you understand, you know, we did a show once on bullying. I don't remember uh, you know, how long ago it was. But that is prevalent in schools. Bullying is just the beginning of hatred. It's just the beginning of being able to use a scapegoat for something that's wrong with you. And if we, if we address bullying and we address anti-Semitism and we address this BDS that you're talking about, it, it'll, it'll help all of us live a much better life. It's a very, it's not easy, Jay, I can only tell you because I see it myself when I go into schools. Uh, the teachers who call me are always the same teachers who call me to lecture. Uh, you know, there's hundreds of teachers that should be calling. When I go to the military bases, I think you actually came to a military base with me when I did a lecture. When we do lectures to the military bases and we have thousands of soldiers understanding what the Holocaust was, it helps them be better people. And I just think it's so important if we could take that education component and, and, and make it something that, that, that every school and every university and every college does, we would be able to curb at least a lot of the, the anti-Semitism that keeps growing, just as you're saying. It's growing every single day. Everybody wants somebody to hate because they're not happy with themselves. Tough. Exactly. So um, it seems to me that um, you know, if, you, if you run a parallel um, between what is happening in the United States now, after Gaza, even before it, um, with uh, what, what happened in Germany and what has happened in other authoritarian uh, developments, I mean, uh, evolutions in history. Um, it starts with the bullying in school as, mm -hmm. as a very young child. It goes to rhetoric that comes out of a playbook, um, you know, comes out of, um, you know, um, uh, uh, just standard phraseology, hate phraseology. And then after a while, people are emboldened to start touching and pushing mm -hmm. and beating up and going to violence and even murder. Um, and so it's a continuum, you know, and we, we have to be very concerned about that. One day it's bullying or, or it's making, you know, silly critical remarks and the next day it's murder. Uh, so this is something that must stop. It must stop for, um, you know, uh, racism. It must stop for, 
anti-Semitism, it must stop for all people who are on the other side of the diversity, you know, uh, diversity aisle, so to speak. I and think the most, sorry, Jay, I think the most important part here is to understand that anti-Semitism starts at a very, very young age and a very young mind, which means when the mind is, uh, requires some type of affirmation of what they're doing is right, it grows. It's like a mushroom that keeps growing bigger. Once bullying starts, you, you brought that up, once bullying begins, anti-Semitism is very easy to come in, anti-Black, anti-whatever all the antis we have. It's it, anti-Semitism, if we could work on anti-Semitism, we will be working on a lot of other antis as well, because they all start from one thing, and that is the need to hate. And that's very important. We need to teach that. We don't spend enough time working on that. How do we eliminate this need to hate, this need that social media, I mean, did you see all the posts, over 5,000 posts on anti, anti-Semitism in just the last week alone? 5,000 posts. I mean, is there that many people that hate Jewish people? That A lot of them don't even know Jews, but they like the idea that they can blame Jews because they're unhappy with themselves. Big Start, problem. It starts with that, goes into the network you know, phase, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and then it goes to organized violence. And I think we have to be very concerned about that. So Seymour, I, I take a lot of, out of this discussion. I, uh, I think it's very important for people to have this discussion. I, I hope somebody listening will, will realize how important it is and, and maybe take affirmative action um, to avoid the, you know, the evolution of this um, disintegration of our decency in the country. Absolutely, Jay. Thank you so much for inviting me. I, it's not a topic that I'd like to discuss. I'd rather talk about some of the other wonderful things that are good about this world. But unfortunately, right now, this is very, very prevalent in your mind and my mind and many others were extremely worried. Thank you, Seymour. Seymour Kazimierski an old friend of ThinkTech. We really appreciate you coming on. Aloha. Aloha.